Okay, we're back. This is theCUBE, and I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and with my co-host David Floyer, who's the CTO of Wikibon.org, and we're digging into backup. Uh, we've been talking at Wikibon for quite some time, is backup needs to evolve, it needs to change. We've often said backup is broken, and data protection as a service is really the fix. Vijay Banga is here. He is a technical fellow uh, within IT at Federal Express. Vijay, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Pleased to be here. Yeah, it's nice to, to be here. We talked a little bit on the phone and, and know a little bit about your story, but we want to share it with our audience. So you heard some of our narrative here about, do you feel sometimes like your backup is broken over the last 10 years and has evolved? Well, <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> we've uh, come a long way. Uh, we've had challenges with backup, but uh, I think we've come a long way from where we were to where we are. Even though we used uh, data domain uh, 10 years back in a development and test environment, I think it's only the past few years that we've been successful with the uh, advent of 10 gig in a data center where we've been able to use it mm. for our database and OS. And we've been able to replace uh, most of the Clarions that we had on the floor with data domains. So yeah, okay. we've had a good story yeah. for the past few yeah, years. Yeah, so we're going to dig into that a little bit. But so before we get too deep into it, I want, I want to set it up a little bit. So you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're a fellow, yeah. uh, technical fellow, that's a, that's a great title. We, uh, we, love, we love talking <laughs> to fellows. So tell us a little bit about your role and, um, and, and what you do at FedEx. Okay, I'm an enterprise architect and I work for the VP of uh, IT. Uh, and uh, my role is to help uh, guide, uh, take products from development, test to production for various areas that are required. So, uh, last few years I've been involved with the migration of our legacy data center, so um, I also have multiple hats. So one of the roles was uh, from a storage reference architecture to try and get the methodologies for migration of our, our legacy data center. So we did inventory for all uh, our storage and then figured out ways to migrate all that. Of course, data domain uh, played a big help in that as well. But uh, currently what I'm doing now is trying to help uh, work on the DR infrastructure, provide DR as a service. Uh, we've been doing DR for several years, but at a larger scale, that's what I'm trying to do now. So, so. talk about um, the infrastructure that you're involved in. You know, okay. I mean, FedEx is a huge company, obviously. You know, yes. We could talk, talk for an hour about what yeah. the infrastructure looks like, but specifically the, the, the areas of your responsibility. What's that like? What's it look like? What kind of applications are you running? Just paint a picture for us. So we have, you know, uh, actually FedEx is a great example of a whole homegrown application. It's all tied together. It's a spider web of applications. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the scale that you don't find uh, products out in the market, so it was all developed in-house. And we are distributed across uh, the globe, but we have major few data centers in the US itself. Um, so we deal with uh, primarily all the infrastructure within the data center. Prior to a uh, couple of years back, we used to do this uh, very much on a project by project basis, but we've moved from that to do everything as an infrastructure. So infrastructure as a service, infrastructure uh, model is the way we've gone to. Okay, so when you got there, so how'd you get there? What was it like before? And, when, and so that during the transition, and, and let's talk about what it's like now, but what's the state you were coming from? Well, uh, on the storage side, you know, it's an easy example to give. We had uh, distributed uh, islands of sand, so we were never able to capitalize on all our assets. So we had uh, um, assets that were dispersed and we were not able to fully utilize that. So when we went to our legacy data center, we moved from our legacy data center to our modern data center, we had a greenfield opportunity, and we wanted, to, we actually had reduced floor, uh, we had constraints for power and cooling, so we really had to uh, figure this out, design this, and then start implementing it. So we had to uh, think through what it means to do everything infrastructure-based, to be able to 
uh, user assets across the floors on our data center so any host can get to any storage. So we did that on the SAN side and we are working on that towards the IP side as well. So um, in, in our conversation today, you told, you told me you got, you got Oracle RMN going, you're using SRDF, Time Finder, you've got recover data point. domain installed, you've got yes. recover point installed. How do those pieces all fit together to form a, a backup strategy? Okay, so um, on, the, on the backup side, we, uh, we have we, we use data domain uh, primarily, both for our OS backups with net backup and with, on the database side, RMAN uh, backups to data domain. So once we got on the 10 gig infrastructure, uh, we give, we get out of the way by providing the infrastructure to the DBAs so that they can have uh, the data domain infrastructure and they can do the backups, they figure out the scheduling part of it and then they can have at it on the data domain. Okay. Besides that, we've also done things from a DR perspective where we use SRDF, and then we've used RecoverPoint as well for various aspects, for migration, for DR, and offsite backups for the larger databases. So, you know, based on the service level that is needed, we have the solution that we provide for it. So talk a little bit more about that. What makes it backup or data protection as a service? How, how, how do you sort of define that, and uh, how do you, and how do you use it? To the, uh, to the users and the businesses. Right, so um, prior to this, it was uh, really a challenge for uh, figuring out on a capacity plan to figure out how do we get the data domains uh, how, uh, because we were doing this spread out on islands of sand, but once we got the data domains, the way we defined and designed it is we have two security zones, back office and customer facing, so we provided the data, data domain infrastructure, we provided the uh, 10 gig uh, interface for them to come to the backups and then we have, we turn over to the DBAs, you know, we work with the development and design DBAs so they understand and turn over to the, the production uh, uh, area as well and then they have the data domain infrastructure and then they're able to do a self-serve. They do the backups, they manage everything, but we assist from providing the infrastructure. So they can provision, get out of the they can provision on their own, and, and do, you, do you do chargebacks or no? No, we don't do chargebacks yet, but. You know, it's, it, well, do you want to do chargebacks, or is it, I mean, a lot of customers that I talk to don't, for their private clouds, they don't want to do chargebacks, because it's a political nightmare, what's the it, point? But it what, is, what, yeah. on a smaller scale, we are looking at it, just like you said, yeah. the political nightmare, but I think if we have to scale this out, and figure out the right service level for the right area in this times of economy, it makes sense to at least show the business as to what it costs, it might, you know, and if we provide a different level of service, they can understand what it's going to cost the business. Yeah, or even a showback. Showback, show yeah, it's not a chargeback, so really, yeah. it's really a showback, yeah. that is what we're So that I think on. is, is yes. very worthwhile. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And then you can have some healthy debates about, you yes, know, what about, am I really getting yes, for this? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. if it's not really hard dollars, because they're paying yes. for it anyway. Yeah, so exactly, way, yes. Form, but, yeah. So, okay, and then, where does quota management fit into this whole thing? How do you, how do you deal with that? So, uh, prior to this current version of the data domain OS, it was not available, so, you know, the challenge we had is we provide the infrastructure, and the way we had designed data domain was really to use for RMAN backups for OS backups, but if you provide the infrastructure, it's available for the DBAs, and they could use it for other areas. <laughs> so that's when, it became a really an, a challenge as to you know why do we have these concerns and issues that we see and so what we did is try and address that by you know having more discussions with them and finding out what is the real goal and the usage for data domain versus what other scratch area they need. So where we are going with that is trying to uh, move to DD Boost so that we can give on the database side. We've already done that on the OS net backup side. Uh, but on the database side, we'll be able to give the data domain as the infrastructure for backups, at the same time provide NAS solutions with Isilon so that they will have that space with quotas on there. So that's uh, okay. where we're So David Floyer, explain briefly what DD Boost is for our audience. So D DD Boost is yes. a speed up, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Uh, it, and I'm, I'm interested, it, it, previously it was only available for the um, uh, for for uh, OS and iSCSI, and yes, not right, for fiber not, channel. So no, right. you've taken the new version, have you, which is available for fiber channel, or is that your? Well, no, on the on the database side. So we use the DD Boost as on the client on the net on backup side. side. Yeah. But now it's available on the database side as well. So there'll right. be the agent on the database side. that'll so be able to do the uh, do that work for work you. Work for you, and, and then and send the less end. network. Yes, and the front
scale out our backups and help utilize our network bottlenecks that we had in the right, infrastructure. Right. Do you, are you uh, combining that? Do you use Armon in, a, in a, another Plex way, or do you just keep a simple? Armon? No, it's really simple Armon uh, and uh, with DDPoost, yes. Yeah, right. yeah. So, how much do you think that's reduced down your uh, uh, the, the amount of time that it takes? Well, I think uh, we've just uh, done the POC for it, so we are headed down that path, so we right, will find okay. out in a couple of months, but I think. The key that we're seeing is the gain from a network bandwidth usage, so it allows more backups to be scheduled uh, so that it's not using the network hogs, because there's still other uh, resource constraints in the environment, so we're trying to reduce them along the way. So on the backup time perspective, we know it's not going to reduce that much, but it's really going to help reduce the constraints in the environment. Right. Are you using any sort of uh, snapshot technology to take a point in time and then so we, we are using snapshots on the data domain on the remote side to make sure that you know we don't, because we have the data domain that's set up as uh, with replication, so we have used that as our offsite backups, but then uh, that's how we also used it for migration and other reasons, but we are using snapshots, time finder copies for some other solutions with SRDF as well. And how do you deal with access control? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, with the newer version, we are uh, actually connecting that to Active Directory so that the users will have uh, access to whatever we want to control them with. So that's how we're going to do access control. Well, Vijay, you mentioned you're in proof of concept with this, but I still want to talk about the business impact. What's the expectation? How did you develop the business case to move in this direction of data protection as a service? Uh, just with the DD Boost or in general? In general. Yeah. Oh, so in general, I think the drive to the newer data center drove us because we had and the, uh, the, when we did the inventory of the storage, we had tier one storage, tier two storage, which was being used primarily for backups, and we didn't have a great solution from that perspective. So instead of having dispersed islands, it was an easy uh, case to show that introducing data domain as an infrastructure, we uh, sweep the flow with all the other tier two storage, and at the same time, you know, we can do much more with that. Yeah, so you were underutilizing assets or yes. utilizing assets in a way that wasn't productive and efficient. Correct. Okay, yes. so so it's a it's a hardcore TCO saving. Yes, exactly. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So do you have um, looking ahead now? Yes. Uh, wh where else do you think you're going? Do you do you, you you've succeeded or you think you'll succeed yes. in this particular part of it? Yeah. Where else do you think you're going to want to take? Do you want to be able to use this on the archiving side as well, or do you want to be able to extract some data from that? What, where, where are you? Where do you think you need to go? We we did look at uh, the data domain from the archive side as well, and I think we have internal challenges yet to figure out because sometimes the retention that we have is much longer and on the wrong tier of storage. So we're going to try and see if we can use the data domain archiver itself and use that for our you know tier two, tier three storage as right. well. Okay. I wonder if that'll reduce the footprint on a tier one storage. I wonder if I can come back to the to the business case. So, you know, TC, hardcore TCO, do you have any metrics you can share or any sort of percent change that you can share? You know, hard numbers, and if it's not hard numbers, even, even sort of gut feels as to how much more efficient you are as a result of this. Sure, so I, I think I can uh, shed some light, you know, in just numbers of backups. Uh, traditionally, we were restricted by only up to 800 gigabytes that we could do because in the one gig environment, we were only able to scale up to that, but. So your window just wouldn't allow you to. The window would not, yeah. and you know, we had 24 hour backups yeah. going on, <laughs> but now with the data domain and with on the 10 gig infrastructure, we have scaled up to at least 3.3 .3 terabytes in our four hour SLA. We can do the restores and then we can play the logs. So in a six hour uh, time that we have, We've scaled up to 3.3 .3 terabytes, but we know we are trying to take it forward that we can go even much further to five or six terabytes that we can do in a, a time frame. And the, so. the experience on the restores, talk about that a little bit. Okay, so um, challenges are not normally on the backup side, but it's on the restore, <laughs> but with the ease uh, on the data domain side, uh, the DBAs uh, uh, love our man, and it's uh, really an ease yeah. uh, for them. We provide the infrastructure and get out of the way, so you know we've done a lot of testing, and when they need it in the environment, they have the flexibility, and you know uh, they have the infrastructure. So uh, we're out of time, but I want to last word, uh, sure. advice to your your yeah. practitioner peers. Somebody who wants to go down this journey. What would you suggest that they do, uh, that they don't do? What, what kind of advice would you give them? I think uh, the key thing that we have to do is, in the environment we have to plan, you know, uh, do your POCs, but uh, plan from the bottlenecks, because the bottlenecks 
uh, not just on the IP side, on the fiber channel side. You know, if you run our man, it'll grab as much uh, horsepower as needed on the storage side, it'll drive your storage hard. So look through all the paths in the, in the data path for backup and restore and you know, know how you can scale. So capacity planning is a major effort. You have to work with the capacity planners. You have to do your schedules correctly, you know, and the amount of retention so you don't do multiple fulls all day and you know, do fulls and incrementals and blend it all out. So a lot of planning ahead uh, of time. Vijay Banga, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate uh, you sharing with us the, the Federal Express story and it was sure. a real pleasure meeting you. Okay. All thanks. right, and thank you David Floyd for helping me out with this one. Um, keep it right there everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're going to look at a service provider and how they are delivering backup as a service. This is theCUBE. I'm Dave Vellante with David Floyer. We'll be right back live from EMC World 2013 from Las Vegas.